प्रयनादेव मुनय स विमुक्ति काम मौन चरती विजने न पार्थनिष्ठा नैता विहाय कृपना विमुक्ष एक नैनम तोदरण भ्रम तो अनुपैश्य ब्रह्मदेव भागवत प्रहलाद प्रेयर उल्लू जेनरली दि सेजेस ऑब्जर्व साइलेंस एंड प्रैक्टिस अदर स्पिरिचुअल डिसिप्लिन्स इन सॉलिट्यूड विद द व्यू टू अटेनिंग देयर ओन लिबरेशन दे डू नॉट शेयर द रिजल्ट ऑफ देयर स्पिरिचुअल डिसिप्लिन्स विद अदर्स But I have no desire to be free, shunning my poor companions. Truly, I do not find any person except you who can save these souls. Pray, Lord, save the suffering souls of humanity. Om Shanti, 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 peace, 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 be with you. This morning, our subject is stories of Vedanta monks, Part Seven. As you remember, I started this series some years ago. Actually, I worked on a book in Bengali, Prachin Shadudir Kotha, stories of the old monks of the Ramakrishna order. Eight hundred twenty-five pages. It will come in two volumes. From nineteen fifty, I came in contact with many great, great monks of the order, and I interviewed them. And some I wrote from my memories, some from my diaries, and I have many diaries of many great monks. That is the way I prepared that huge volume of manuscript. There are so many things to learn from this paper. So today I shall talk about Swami Vivekananda, who was the tenth president of the Ramakrishna Order. I knew him from 1960 to 1985 over the period of 25 years. I received my Brahmacharya vow, first monastic vow, and in 1966, and my final vows in 1969 from him. I may I shall make my Talk in three parts. First, I shall tell you a brief biographical sketch of that Swami. Second, his reminiscences of nine monastic disciples he knew personally, and the Holy Mother. She was he was a disciple of Holy Mother. And third part, I shall tell you some of my personal reminiscences of the Swami. Shami Bireshwaranand was born on 31st October 1892 in Madras. His family came from South Kannada near Mangalore. He lost his mother when he was five years old, and he lost his father when he was ten years old. He was raised by his uncle. There are three children, three um, brothers and sisters. And his pre-monastic name was Pandurang Prabhu, Prabhu P R A B H U. That is his surname. So we used to call him Prabhu Maharaj. <laughs> That is the way he is known. So he went to school in Mangalore, 
Then he moved to Madras Presidency College to have his bachelor's degree. His uncle wanted him to be a lawyer, so he said we are sent to Trivandrum. But when he was in college, his friend gave him a copy of complete works of Swami Vivekananda, Volume One, where he will find Swami's Chicago addresses, Karma Yoga and Raja Yoga. That is the first volume. So he was so inspired, he wrote a letter to the publisher, Swami Prigyanand in Mayavati, in the Himalayas. That Swami suggested him that you keep in contact with the Swami in Madras. So he came to know about the Swami is there. Then in June 1916, he joined the Ramakrishna Order in Belwood Mart, 24 years old, came from South India. <coughs> he was very short, but he was extremely intelligent, very cool-headed, humorous, loving soul. So Swami Premananda, a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, asked him that you go to Jairambati and have initiation from the Holy Mother. So he took a train, it is a small meter gauge train from Haura, came to Chapajanga, the nearest place. From Chapajanga, they began to walk. Do you know how does it go? From Chapajanga to, to Mungeshwari, five, five or six miles, walk, cross the river. Again walk twelve miles. Then come to Darugeshwar. Then walk another twelve miles. Then he will go to Kamarpur. So Chubbish and nearly thirty miles he will have to walk. So when they reached the Chapajanga station, it was night, evening, so they stayed in the in the railway station. He mentioned that half of the roof of the station was not there. Anyhow, we passed the night there. Then they began to walk, crossed one river. Then, I remember when I first went to Kamarpuk Jarambach, I had to cross also. Three rivers. So, now of course all rivers, there is a bridge. You can go in two hours from Calcutta to Kamarpuk Jarambach. So what happened? On the way, Swami Shat Prakashananda, who was the head of this center, he and another Swami and this Swami, the three were going to Jairambaji for the initiation. But Shat Prakashananda had this century on the way. They could not make it. He, this, this Swami could not make it. So, Prabhu Maharaj told him that it would be very difficult for Holy Mother to Take care of you in that remote village, you better go back to Calcutta. So Hat Prakashananda and his other friend came back to Calcutta. He alone and another Jebuji reached Jaya Kamar Pugur at ten o'clock. Sri Ramakrishna's nephew gave them lunch. Then in the afternoon, again four miles he would have to walk. He reached Jarambaji. He found Holy Mother was seated on a veranda and cutting vegetables for the night meal, for supper. And he took a letter from Premananda, a, a, a Brahmachari read that letter to him, to her, and Mother said, all right, I shall initiate him tomorrow morning, after my worship. So thus he was initiated. Very interesting. Then I shall talk, I shall tell him that he was he got his Brahmacharya bhav from Swami Brahmananda, and finally in 1917, and got his final vows in 1920 from Swami Brahmananda. But he was so you know. Sometimes you can see some people maybe young. But very dependable, very predictable, and very responsible. 
So this young man was seeing his sincerity, genuine love for the order. The authority made him a trustee in 1929. Very young. And then they sent him to be the president of the Advaita Ashrama in Mayabhati. At that time he published Roma Rola's, those famous books on Ramakrishna Vivekananda. Brilliant man. Not only that, he was very learned. He translated Brahma Sutra, Shankara's commentary, some part, into English, then Sridhara's commentary of the Gita into English, then Sri Vaishya into English. Great scholarly person. He knew seven languages. Anyhow, he became the president of Advaita Ashrama. Then, in 1938, he became the assistant secretary of the Ramakrishna Order in headquarters in Belun Then he became the general secretary in 61. Then he became the president in 1966 till his death in 1985. That is a short biographical sketch. He was a great karma yogi. Work was worshipped to him. Only in between two years, he went to Rishikesh to practice austerity. You see, that is very important for a monk's life. Completely depend on God. Don't carry any food, money, money, nothing. Just bake food from the chhatra, from the inns, and practice your spiritual disciplines. That he did for two years. Anyhow, Swami passed away. He developed throat cancer in 1983 and passed away March 13, 1985. That is a short biographical sketch. Now I shall tell you his reminiscences of some of some Holy Mother and some other Jewish disciples. As I already mentioned, Mother, his initiation from the Holy Mother. He said, if anybody would come to Holy Mother, he never disappointed that devotee. All his initiation. Whoever may him, he or she may be. He said that there was a young woman who used to come to sell vegetables, hawking, money hawkers, from door to door. So Holy Mother used to buy vegetables from her. After Holy Mother's passing away, that woman used to come and sit on her veranda, much floor, and for a few minutes. Well, why do you hear? Mother is not here. You know, still I remember her. When I come here and sit, I get peace and joy. Swami mentioned that whom Mother touched, how their lives are transformed. He wrote many small, small reminiscences. A rich man donated a lot of money to the Ramakrishna Hajar. Mother said, how much he left, he left for the poor people. <laughs> he loved the, she loved the poor people, served them. Then he told his eyewitnesses accounts. When mother passed away, I was there. Her body was brought to Belun Mat from Calcutta. It was cremated. The other side of the Ganges, heavy rain. But this side of Belun Mat, sunshine. Then when her body was completely cremated, then Swami Sharadananda put according to the rituals, you will have to pour water on that funeral pile. Meanwhile, rain came, and the rain extinguished the entire fire. Well, I was an eyewitness. I saw it. She is an amazing phenomenon. Mother was the Divine Mother. The nature itself extinguished Mother's funeral fire. 
Somebody asked Holy Mother, Mother, when will be the India free? Mother said, you people will not be able to bring freedom by fight. When there will be fight among themselves, then India will be free. And that actually happened. During the Second World War, began and India got freedom in 1947, just after the Second World War. He mentioned some people come and complain about the restlessness of the mind. Mother said, let that person repeat mantra ten to fifteen thousand times. Then mind will be automatically under control. And her last message, don't see fourteen others. Then he talked about Swami Brahmananda. Well, we saw Maharaj most of the time in in ecstatic mood, in samadhi. His mind will roam in a higher realm of consciousness. Sometimes we used to give him tobacco to smoke. He will give one, two puff, then gone. But he was very much interested about Gardening, flower garden, fruit garden, vegetable garden, then about dairy. He said the monastery should be very neat and clean, and the monks should judge me idle. You must grow something, try to be self-sufficient. And he was something unique. South Indian flowers, fruits, those trees he will bring to North India. For example, Nagulingam. In Bengal, we have never seen Nagulingam, which is Brahmananda brought Nagulingam, which is a beautiful flower from south in Belurma. And some of the Dopati food and some other flowers are Bengalis, they bloom like anything. He took those things to Bangalore. And fruit trees. Hey, this fruit is good. Take to, take some plants and send to other part of the country. He was amazing. Not only that, he went to South India and heard the Ram Nam Shankirtan, the hymn, the chanting on the name of Rama. He brought that thing and introduced in the Ramakrishna order. Nowadays in every center on Akadoshi Jai, they sing that Ram Nam. What is good in South India that will bring to North India? What is good in North India that will bring to South India? You know, this is the way you find what is called national and integration. Otherwise, South and North, you know, their food of it, their language, our food of it, our language, completely different. But how we can unite ourselves to religion? That Swamiji said, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Arabian Sea to Bay of Bengal, vast land, 18 major languages, 200 dialects, food of it, dress, everything different, but all are Hindus. In that respect, there is unity. That Swamiji said. Training. It is extremely difficult to train, make human beings perfect. That Swami Brahman used to do. Every morning you boys come and meditate with me. Then after two, three hours meditation you will talk. Ask any questions they want. This is the way he used to train these young monks. Very important. I sometimes say that, you know, in home, you must, in the evening, you must tell the stories of the Ramayana, Mahabharata, the epics, the moral and ethical stories to the children. That is the way they get training. <laughs> Only television will not do. Not only that, sometimes he tried to introduced Indian culture from different parts. For example, in Madras, he started Durga Puja with image. That is not very common in South. Bengal is very, very famous for Durga Puja. In Konkhal also, Hardwar. I am just telling you that how these great monks of the Ramakrishna order felt about the whole country. Oh, 
on Swami Brahmananda's birthday. The Jagru gave him a garland and flowers and all those things, bouquet. Then he took these things and asked other monks, give to Swami Shuddhananda, who was Vivekananda's disciple and one of the trustees. These garlands around him and you boys sing and dance around him. Yes, he was full of fun. <laughs> and they knew that the Maharaj is a knower of Brahman. He used to bring his mind down, play, down to do this kind of merriment and childish game. In Madras, Swami Ramakrishna Nanda brought a plate of fruit, sweets. Some Madras devotees brought to him. Maharaj, please eat this fruit, sweets. No, 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 my stomach is bad. Yesterday I was very bad. I was sick. I cannot eat this food. Take back. You do not eat. It is Sri Ramakrishna sitting inside you. Eat this food. Immediately he started to eat. And he was not sick at all. You know, it shows when your mind is united with God, what happens. They play in different planes. He went to visit Madurai temple, Minakshi, one of the famous temples in the South India. According to their custom, only Brahmins can enter the inner sanctuary. Brahmananda was not a Brahmin, he is Kshatriya. Thus, the moment he was trying to enter, the priests are trying to stop him, but in the meanwhile, Swami Ramakrishnananda, who was with him, he is Brahmin, he shouted, Aluar, Aluar. Aluar is a Vaishnava saint, illumined people. Well, he is an illumined soul. Then the priests went back. They did not stop him. And this saw Swami Brahmananda stood in front of the mother image. And he was in Samadhi. And Ramakrishnananda is holding him. And the priests are all overwhelmed. Amazing. This disciple of Ramakrishna. Then he mentioned once in Belun Mach, Swami Brahmananda was in Sham, he was singing and dancing, and all of a sudden he went into Samadhi, they carried his body in the living room, then Holy Mother, and they could not bring his back, consciousness back. Then Holy Mother came, Rakhal, he touched his body, eat this. Then he came back to his own consciousness. You know, these Swamis, they are the eyewitnesses of this account. They saw how an illumined soul lives in this world. Then he talked about Swami Premananda, who was another direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. He used to come at vegetables for the master's cooking. A rich, a, a young man came, he was a master's degree, wants to be a monk. Oh, you have a master's degree, you want to be a monk? Go, cut the fodder for the cows. First I shall shatter your ego. Go. So he went to cut the fodder, son of a rich man, cut his finger. So he, somebody says he cut his finger, he was trying to hide. Then Swami Brahmananda, Swami Premananda said, he took him to the dispensary, made a bandage. I asked you to cut the fodder, not the finger. <laughs> you, are, you have no concentration. How these disciples of Ramakrishna tested people. One day, he was invited to speak in Bangladesh, Dhaka. So the Jabuchis came to pick him up. He said, let me go to the shrine first. He went to the shrine and asking permission 
from Sri Ramakrishna. Master, shall I go? The Jebujis could not hear, but he heard Sri Ramakrishna told him, don't go. So he did not go. He came out from the shrine and told the Jebujis, I cannot go. Master, forbid me. What happened? Next day they saw in the newspaper that the train goes from Calcutta to Gualanda. And then you will have to take a boat, a steamer, which goes to Dhaka. And that steamer sunk from the cyclone. It was overturned and all are killed. Sri Ramakrishna said, don't go. He emphasized Yuga Dharma, the religion of this age. What is the religion of this age? Serve human beings as God. That is the supreme worship, Pura Puja. I was told, one devotee was asking me in Kansas City, show me, what is Puja? What is worship? I said, you know, and last Sunday I spoke in our Hindu temple about worship. First kind of worship is, as we go to the temple, shrine, we will carry flowers, fruits, and offer to the deities. External worship, as I do here three times a year. That is first. Next worship is going to the temple, we pray, we glorify God, we sing, we chant the mantra. That is second kind of worship. Third kind of worship is meditation on God. You meditate and try to be united with God. And the highest worship, I am Brahman. I am that supreme reality. I am that Atman. So if you cannot do the highest, and that is very difficult. I am the Atman. Come to the second stage. Meditate on God. If you cannot do that, come to the third stage. That is, meditate or the prayer. It is very common. Christianity will find a lot of prayers. And Hindus also, Japan. And if you cannot do that, come to the lowest stage. That is external worship. Fruits, flowers, incense, go to the temple, offer to the Lord, and that way you feel good. So he said the highest worship after, you know what worship does? It would destroy your selfishness, ego. Those are the two great obstacles in the spiritual life. So he See that the Sri Ramaswami Vivekananda demonstrated the greatest worship in this age. For example, if an illiterate person comes to you, give him education. If a hungry person comes to you, give him food. If a sick person comes to you, give him medicine. If a rich person comes to you, give him spirituality. According to person, you will have to perform worship. That he was talking in Madra, in Malda in one lecture. So somebody says, we like to hear about devotion. Oh, you want to know about devotion? I don't find anybody here who is capable to listen to devotion. What do you mean? There are thousands of people who don't believe. No. Then he says, listen to a story. There is a hawker. At noon time, when people go to work, they sell their merchandise from, in Calcutta Street, you can see it. Do you like to buy utensil? Do you buy, do you like bed sheet, bed cloth? Some people carry on their shoulder and they move from lane to lane, they sell their products. So what happened? A man came and said, hello, do you like to buy love and devotion? Do you want to buy love and devotion? He was fairy. Then what happened? <coughs> Some people opened the door. How much is the price? Well, it is priceless. You will have to give. But then tell me what shall I give? Head. Your head is the price. Door was closed. In this way, nobody dared to buy love and devotion. Nobody wants to give their head. Head means you are everything to God. Who is here 
who can offer everything to God. I do not want to keep anything for myself. That way you can attain love and devotion. That's the story Swami told to the devotees. <clears throat> then he talked about Swami Turiyananda. Well, I was with him from 1920 to 1921 March. He was a Gitukta yogi. We read Gita. But we do not apply the teachings of Gita on our lives. But this Swami did. He took a verse and applied on his life and attained perfection. Then he took next verse of the Gita. So he was a Gitukta yogi. Then he said that how, when God protects you, what happens? He was traveling during his itinerant days. And he was lying down under a tree. All of a sudden, somebody, he heard some voice, and somebody is pushing him. Hey, get away, get away from this place. Get away from this place. So he did not see anybody. Anyhow, he heard the voice. Immediately left the place. Then a cyclone was blowing. And a big branch of the tree fell on that spot. But it was Sri Ramakrishna protected me. Then somebody asked you, he went for begging food. Somebody asked, what is renunciation? Well, if I had renunciation, do you think I would come here for begging food? I would sit there and God would bring food to me. <laughs> God is love. He came to America in 1899 and stayed till 1902. Three years he lived in America, especially he worked in California, Shanti Ashrama and San Francisco. He did not care too many rules and regulations. Just love God and meditate on Him. Have a direct contact with God. He was a great taskmaster. He trained some American devotees in California. One day a devotee came, Swami, we are going uh, to have it, to going to a theater. It is a beautiful and well-managed play. Let us go. Swami said, no, you better stay with me. We shall study Gita. And he lifted their minds in a higher level of consciousness. You know, that this that Swami inspired me very much in my life. I read his letters. And I read his all reminiscences available. I mean, if you really get boost in your spiritual life, that is the Swami. He had carbuncle. Doctor wanted to have a do the surgery on him. He said, at that time, you, I'm talking about 1921, 22. At that time, anesthesia was not invented. It was chloroform. They used to put chloroform. So the doctor said that we will have to do chloroform on you before, do the, before the surgery. He said, no, 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 not necessary. Just before surgery, tell me, I shall withdraw my mind from the body and I shall not feel at all. And that he did. Before surgery, he just slipped, he removed, he took away his mind from the body. <coughs> surgery was done. Then when the surgery is over, he said, everything is okay. Then he came back to his body. How to do it? That way he quite often used to say, Dukkha jane, arshodir jane, mantumi ananda thaku. The suffering and the body take care of themselves. Oh my mind, you will stay in bliss. That is a beautiful message. He told his attendants, you people, take care of my body, and I take care of your soul. So 
Sometimes he was he used to scold his, his attendants. Then somebody said, "You are a monk. How is it that you become so restless and you lose your temper and you scold?" Then Shami said, "My scolding is for your good. I have no motive, no self-interest. I like to see your good, your welfare." So when I see imperfections, I try to correct you. Just little, little things. If you can be perfect, then in big things you can will be perfect. That is the way these teachers used to teach. He says, "I never sat in my life reclining on my back. If all the pictures you see, his backbone is straight." At the time of death, he was telling his attendants, "Hold me, make me sit. I shall give up my body three through sitting posture, not lying down on bed." What willpower he had! Next, Swami Akhandananda. He was Nara Brahman, Ram Krishna disciple, but very childlike nature. <laughs> And he is the Swami started the philanthropic activities of the Ram Krishna Mission in 1990. Sorry, 1897. Swami was very fond of him. What was his main focus? He practiced one verse from the Bhagavatam: "Ko nuna siyato payo atro jena ham sarvadehi nam anta pravishya satatam bhaveyam dukkhvarava." Lord, is there any way that I can enter the heart of suffering human beings and take their sufferings so that I can relieve them? That was his motto. I shall take other sufferings and make them happy. Great Swami. Goal: Karma Yoga. Narana and Seva. Worship human beings as God. What Swami Ji told him that he practiced. You lead your life for your own liberation and for doing good to humanity. He says, "You people think that if you worship the temple with the stone images, you will realize God, and worshiping these living gods, you will not realize God." That is the way in Kanchal in Hardwar. The Himalayan monks considered as bhangi monks. Bhangi means sweeper monks. We are sweepers. In our hospital, we nurse the patients, clean their body. That is sweeper's job. That we do. <laughs> These are all sweeper monks. They used to hate us. They will look down upon us. Then there is a big debate in Hardwar. There is one Swami. He really appreciates our work. In some people are dying on the street. Some monks are dying without treatment. We used to pick up those people and treat them in our hospital, free. That we do in Brindavan. That we do in Banaras. That we do in Kanchal, Hardwar. I was reading an interview. We take care of 1,600 poor widows in Brindavan. Every month we give them ration: rice, lentil, oil, soap, clothes, blanket, whatever they need. We offer. We give. Some rich people, of course, fund for this project. 1,600 women we take care of. Old widows. Some are on the streets. We take care of them. So he was, he was one of them who did these kinds of activities. You know, one day he came to Bel- uh, Calcutta. So the other monk said, "Maharaj, we, we will have to feed us today some rasagulla, sweet balls." Hey, I do not have money. 
but you see some money in your pocket. Hey, he went to Shri Sharadananda, look, your monks are demanding Rasagulla from me, where shall I get money? You have money, why don't you feed them? Oh, you are taking their side. <laughs> then, it is all fun, he wanted to feed them. <laughs> but he wanted to be demanded, you know, forced you. Then it will be interesting. <laughs> Then he was not well, so he came to Calcutta and is staying for treatment in the house of a very rich person. Then Swami Vireshwaranda went and some other monks Maharaj, look how I am well taken care of here by these devotees. You people cannot take care of me this way. Then the Swami said, Maharaj, this is the house of a rich man. And Belurmach is the monastery of Vivekananda. We cannot compete with them. That is Swamiji's monastery. You are right. I shall go tomorrow there. I shall leave this rich man's house. <laughs> then this rich man came and the other people, Maharaj, please stay. No, I shall go to Belurmach. He did not listen to anybody. Next morning he left. Swamiji. Then he told Shami Bhrisharananda, told I had also the story from him also. He said, he was then the president of Advaita Ashrama in Calcutta, and Swami was staying in that rich man's home. Then he said, somebody, one monk went to Swami Akhandananda and told him, Swami, we had a nice feast, and you are in Calcutta, they, would, they did not invite you. Swami said, yes, Prabhu did not invite me? No. Let him come, I shall take a, I shall take a, <laughs> I shall, I shall show him something, you know. So he went. Other monk came and told Prabhu Maharaj that we, I told against you to Shami Akhanjananda. So he went to him and, Maharaj, he did not want to say, he was picked. Maharaj, tell me, what is wrong? Wrong. You arrange a big feast and you didn't invite me. That is wrong. Well, I have a complaint against you. This is my complaint. Then Prabhu Maharaj said, I have also a complaint against you. What is your complaint? Then Okanjananda said, well, you have complained against me and I have complaints against you. So we need a judge. Who will be the judge? We will settle our dispute. Then Prabhupada said, you will be the judge. How can I be judge? I am complaining. I cannot be judge. The Maharaj, you will be the judge. I do not trust any monks, but I trust you. You will be the impartial. Though you are complaining against me, but I like to, you will be, you will have to be a judge. All right, I shall be the judge. Let me say what is your complaint. Oh, Maharaj, you tell me what is your complaint. You did not invite me, that is my complaint. Maharaj, it is not a big bhanjara, just some big people brought some sweets, some rasagalla and some green coconut that you ate and enjoyed. It is not a big feast. Oh. Then he said, then he said, now you will have to listen my complaint. Well, what is your complaint? Swamiji said, that if you make any mistake, you will have to take that person privately, not publicly. And then you talk to him, that is the norms. So you break the rule of Swamiji. You did not call me and ask me, you are publicly say these things against me. You are right, then it is my mistake, so I lost. Yes, Maharaj, you have lost. You broke Swamiji's rule. So much faith in Swamiji's words. That is our custom. If you make a mistake, I shall take you public, privately in my room and I shall tell you these are the things wrong you are doing. That I shall not beat the drum in front of everybody and embarrass you. Because we, we develop mutual love and respect. I shall not demean you in front of everybody. So, Yes, I made a mistake. So what is the, now what would be the solution? 
My solution is very easy. Well, what? You will have to come to Advaita Ashram and have lunch with us. <laughs> and you will have to stay till four o'clock. All right. Well, that is the damage. You know, you make the damage in the suit and that way it will be cleared up. All right. He came, had lunch. Now I shall go. No. You will have to stay till four o'clock. Four o'clock. All right. But I shall, we shall feed you something we have never eaten. What? <coughs> I traveled all over India. I was the guest of the many Maharajas. I ate all various things in my life. What will you feed me? You will see you have never eaten in your life, which I shall, we shall give to you at four o'clock. All right, then I shall stay. You are the one. <laughs> he decided to stay. In the meantime, Prabhu Maharaj made coffee and went to the market, brought some ice and put ice and all over and made that coffee very cold. <laughs> then it is summertime. So at four o'clock he gave that coffee that to Swami. He sipped it. Hey, it is very good. Really I have never drunk, I have never drunk this kind of Ice coffee in my life. It is something new. <laughs> you know, sometimes this newer of Brahman, how they become very, very childlike. So simple, so no harsh ego. Then he talked about Shami Vigyanananda. <clears throat> He was doing the construction work of Vivekananda's temple and such as a bricks. And he was complaining. Swami Brahmananda said, brick will come. This today, tonight brick will come. No, Maharaj, brick will not come. Well, bet, 10 rupees. If you lose, I shall, give, you will give me 10 rupees. And if I lose, I shall give you 10 rupees. So Shami began on the Jinya sleep at night. Every hour he gets up and see whether the Ganges Ghat, the brick boat has arrived or not. Then at four o'clock he knew that he won. He went to bed. And Maharaj also got 35 and saw that brick, that boat just anchored in our Bilud Maj Ghat. And Maharaj said, he kept quiet. Then Maharaj, Swami got up and came to Brahmananda's room. Maharaj, you lost. You, Brahmananda said, you have lost. You go and see whether brick has arrived or not. He peeped through the window and saw the boat was there. <coughs> then he said, Maharaj, I have no money. You give me just 10 rupees that I shall return to you. <laughs> That bitch, <laughs> I have no money. You will have to give money that I shall return to you. <laughs> how this, you know, this war of Brahmans, how they play. <laughs> he says, I was sleeping in a room next, pretty close to Swamiji's room, Vivekananda's room, and I heard some crying noise from Swamiji's room. I entered the room and saw Swamiji was lying down on the floor crying. Swamiji, Swamiji, Peshun, you were here. I thought you were sleeping. I was sleeping. My, my sleep broke. You were crying hard. What is wrong? You know, Peshun, I cannot bear the sufferings of human beings. I see people are suffering. And I was praying to Sri Ramakrishna to remove their sufferings. And another story he told that all of a sudden Swami Ji cried out at night in his room. So again began on the wind. Swami Ji, what is wrong? Wrong? I was sleeping. Something happened. It shocked my heart and my sleep broke. There is somewhere wrong. Next day they found in Fiji there was a terrible earthquake. 
many, many people die. Swami see that, you know, the earthquake, sometimes the shock, seismic, you know, how this earthquake this goes and hits others. This Nwara Brahman, his heart was hurt because of this. He told all these stories. Swami told many stories of Swami Ramakrishna Nanda. How Sri Ramakrishna, how he served Sri Ramakrishna. Summertime in Madras, there was no fan. He was a palm leaf fan. He will go and whole night will fan Sri Ramakrishna. If there is any rain, he will go and hold the umbrella so that the water will not drip on Sri Ramakrishna's bed. But he was an amazing person. He used to see Sri Ramakrishna leaving. This story I've never heard. Sometimes during the British period, they thought the monks are very revolutionary. But they are doing something against the British government. So some secret service people came in disguise to Madras Mount. And Swami invited him for lunch. He made some small stone chips with rice and dal and gave him to eat. Then he was saying, Swamiji, what is wrong? I hear a lot of stone chips. We are poor monks, that is the way we eat here. He knew that man is a spy, has come to spy against them, against the monks. That's that man left. <laughs> Anyhow, now I shall tell you my reminiscences. I, I wrote a few pages in his memorial volume. As I said, he was not a very good looking and a big person. So I wrote a story in the very beginning. Abraham Lincoln was not a good looking person. So when you wait for debating with Douglas, his opponent, and Douglas said, hey, Lincoln is a double faced man, don't give him vote, give vote to me. Lincoln got up and said, My friend Douglas says I am a double-faced man. If I had a spear face, do you think I would carry this one? That is a beautiful line of Lincoln. <laughs> Another story I remember. Somebody, Lincoln said, You know, I am so poor, I cannot come to you. My opponent brought by his carriage to you. So he is a good man. So you give vote to him. If you don't give to him, give to me. And he won. <laughs> Amazing person, Abraham Lincoln. So Maharaj may not be look very good looking or something like that, but he has a magnetic personality. And very austere. So after my initiation, I go into him. Maharaj, give me some advice. Advice? Read Swami Turiyananda's letters and Brahmananda's teachings, then you will not have to ask any question about his spiritual life to anybody. Those two books are in Bengali. I translated them into English. A Guide to Spiritual Life and Spiritual Treasures. If you read these two books, you will not have to ask any question to anybody. You know exactly what your spiritual life is and what you will have to do. In 1962, he asked me, could you buy a milk pot for me which can contain two cups of milk? So I went to Calcutta, different shops, and I carried one pot to him. He took his two cups and see that still it is two and a half cups. It is not exact two cups. He said, take back, I want two cups. Again came back, went to China market, Chandni Chak, all shops I searched. Finally, 
I took three or four containers. A little more, a little less, these, that. I could not get exact two cups. So I told the owner of the shop, I am giving you money, but I am, I shall, you'll have to take back if I'm, if I do not want to buy. Well, that will be fine. So I had three, four bomb containers to him and say, Maharaj, these are the things available in the market. You will have to choose. Again, he measured. Then he said, he, I mean, without any, unwillingly, he accepted one. Literally, I came to know why he was so particular. Because in monk's quarter, the ration is two cups of milk. And if he sends it to the kitchen, they will fill it up, because he was the young secretary. That means he is taking half a cup milk extra. That means he is depriving other monks, half a cup milk, that he does not want. How thoughtful, caring, loving this person so had, very particular. Another day he asked me a question. So I asked him, I said, Maharaj, I think so, it may be. In this way he answered. He scolded me right and left. What? Never give me any vague answer. Either you say, I yes, I know, or say, I do not know. Based on your words, I shall make a decision. So if your words are wrong, my decision will be wrong. I learned a great lesson. Don't use any vague words. I think so, it may be, it seems to me. <laughs> he was very fond of ginger lodges, very hard rock candy, rock candy, <laughs> ginger candy. <laughs> I used to buy for him. I remember in training center we had a very bad time when we were in training in 64, 65. We did not have sufficient food in the monastery. We were very hungry at the evening. So, sometimes we used to go to him and he knew that we do not have money to buy extra food for the brahmacharis. No snack. 11 o'clock, 11.30, lunch, 9.20, dinner. In between, only one cup of tea. So, what happened? When I came to Hollywood, when I told my stories of training center, a devotee gave me $12,000. Immediately, I sent to Balloon March, to the training center, to the President Maharaj. Maharaj, I got this $12,000. Please buy afternoon snacks for these young monks in the training center. Then he wrote me back, you were right, you suffered, but now we arrange that thing. They get some pop rice, some cookie, cookies and some stuff, some snacks we are providing to the monks. I remember, I, I used to offer food to Shami Vivekananda on his birthday. In his room, morning breakfast, noontime lunch, evening dinner, and every two, three hours, one cigarette. Shamiji. <laughs> so all Jebuchis will bring all fancy cigarettes. So every two, three hours, I put a cigarette and put a cigarette tray on his desk. Cigarette will be burnt automatically, you know. So in the in eight o'clock, Shami Bireshwarandaji used to come to the Shamiji's room. And he used to ask, hey, is there any cigarette prasad left? <laughs> cigarette prasad. <laughs> Thank you, yes, Mother has some cigarette, some, whatever packages are left over. I gave to him and he used to take this thing and go to his room. <laughs> cigarette prasad. I remember when I was in Hollywood. There also one nun used to come and tell me, Swami, can I have some cigarette prasad of Swami? Uncle, I can give you, but on condition you'll have to meditate whole night. (laughs) 
I was, while I was coming to this country, you know, I was selected for Hollywood. I went to him and said, Maharaj, I am going, I do not know where I am going. We were going to work for Sri Ramakrishna, don't worry. That time, it was on 31st May evening in Bombay. I am leaving 1st of June, early morning. I went to his room, he gave me some sweets, some fruits and blessed me. Then in 1977, when I returned to India, he was telling, hey, sprinkle some Ganges water on his head and make him pure. He came from the West <laughs> and give him a chair. Uncle Maharaj, I'm, I feel shy to sit in front of you on a chair. I shall sit on the floor. Hey, give him a table instead of chair. <laughs> I sat at his feet. My time is over, but he is a really, really great shadow. He one day he told me, you know, nobody is perfect. We have come here to become perfect. If you take the hair from a blanket, one after another, there will be no blanket. So, Give everybody a chance. The monks, they also make mistakes. Give them a chance. It is Sri Ramakrishna brought them. It is Sri Ramakrishna who will change them. We can only create an spiritual atmosphere. You know, if you live with them, full of compassion, full of forgiveness. And it is the love which can change people, that is short. Thank you. Uma Satoma Sad Gamaya, Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya, Mritturma Amritam Gamaya, Avira Vidma Yedhi, Rudra Jate Dakshinamukam, Tinamampahi Nityam, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Lead from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Light us through and through. And guide us evermore with the loving presence. Oh, peace, 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 and forth.